Welcome to SNS Grills. I'm Russ Jones from the YouTube channel Smoker Ribs Barbecue. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I take a whole beef tenderloin and how I trim it and I cut it down to where we ultimately end up with the center cut portion, better known as the Chateau Briand. And from there, we're going to reverse sear it on the SNS Kamado coming right up. Today I'm going to show you how to do a whole beef tenderloin. And uh, when I say whole, that's exactly what we got right here. Now I purchased this and it already had butcher's twine trussing this up and they had already trimmed the silver skin and they have trimmed a lot of the fat. A lot of times you'll get these and they just have globs of fat on them and you have to pull all that off, cut all that off. So they did all that for me. This is what they call the head. This is a separate muscle. And as you can see, there's a lot of silver skin right up under here, and that is like chewing through a rubber band. So that's got to be removed. So I'm just going to separate that. And then uh, right in this area, they call this the chain. I'm going to remove that as well. What we're trying to do is get to right here. This is the center cut portion of this beef tenderloin. And the uh, prime part of it is usually from about right here to right here. They call that the Chateau Briand, and that's really the heart of it. And uh, don't throw this meat away. This is great to grind up as hamburger. You can cut this individually for just a simple meal. A lot of things, a lot of uses for it. All right, so let's get started separating some of this. Just take you a knife. Don't get too aggressive until you see where you're at. Just follow that muscle. So we're just going to lay that to the side. Get your knife under here. Get your little tab. And try to hang as close as you can to the meat. That way you don't waste too much meat. And that is removed. Like I said, they've already trimmed this up quite a bit. This thing's usually got quite a bit of silver skin if you get one like that. Now you do pay more when you buy one that's been trimmed up somewhat. Now this is the chain and it will just about pull off. So put that in our pile that we're saving. Now I want to take and come right about here. It gets real thin on this end and just cut it about right here. There's another pile that we can save and then we're going to go about right here. This silver skin right there we need to get off. It's a very, very tender cut of meat. It's the most prized cut on beef. This is what they cut the filet mignon from, this center part here that we've cut out. Let me back you up to yesterday, about 24 hours ago. I did a dry salt brine on this, and that's where you would take salt. You can use plain table salt. You can use kosher salt. And typically, if you're using a kosher salt, you would use a half a teaspoon per pound and a uh, table salt you would use one quarter of a teaspoon per pound. So I gave this a good covering on all sides while it was still whole. So all this meat here has also been seasoned. So I'm going to take some black pepper and that's all we're going with salt and black pepper and it's just all it needs. This is such a really good cut of beef. That's all you need. And being primed this has got enough intramuscular fat within it to really give it a great flavor. And I think we are good. So I've got the beef tenderloin just resting. I need to get that center up to around room temperature to where we get a much better cook on that. So that gives me an opportunity to go ahead and get the SNS Kamado ready, get it fired up and get it dialed in to around 250 degrees. Now I'm gonna start with some lump charcoal. And uh, for those of you that's not familiar with a uh, lump charcoal, 
it's basically real wood and it goes through a process where they remove the oxygen and they burn it with very 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 low oxygen and it makes it extremely hard and it burns well it gets hotter than most uh, charcoal briquettes does but i like using it and that's what i'm going with today so we're going to take and put this into our flowing sphere so you don't want to light all these at one time because you're going to get this entirely too hot. Like I said, we're trying to dial in 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I like to do is take a fire starter and I normally use these tumbleweeds right here. We'll just put a couple right here in the corner and we're going to light those. It's going to take around 10 minutes for this to catch this charcoal around it. And once I know that it's good and lit, then I'm going to lower the lid on this Kamado and we're going to dial in the temperatures. I'll bring you back and show you how I'm going to adjust the bottom vent and the upper vent to get this at 250 degrees. Been going around 10 minutes and we got a good fire established here. So what I'm going to do right before I close this is I'm going to lay just a couple little pieces of hickory in here. I'm going to move them back here. I don't want them to burn up too quick by the time this gets up to temp will eventually hit that hickory there. All right, I'm gonna remove this piece right here. It's sticking up a little higher than what the grate, I want the grate to lay as flat as it can, and that's perfect. And I'm just gonna take and lay this probe in here just to monitor the temperature. That should be good right there. We're gonna close the lid. I'm gonna open this top vent to around halfway. Now here on the lower vent, the lower vent, I've got just shy of halfway open. Now I'm going to watch my, my uh, temperatures on the inside, and when I get around 200 degrees, I'm going to slide this to about a finger's width open, and I will also pull back my top vent to just, just barely a crack to maintain that 250 degrees. I'll show you that when I get to it. All right, I'm up to 197. That's close enough. So what I just done is I went ahead and adjusted this top vent to about an eighth of an inch open. And the bottom vent is still about a finger width. Now, if I need to adjust that more, that's how I will adjust it, the lower vent and the top vent. All right, I have reached 225 degrees in the SNS Kamado. We're going to raise the lid. We're going to take our beef tenderloin. We're going to place it right over here. Now you want to monitor the internal temperature of this. We're going to insert our probe right there. So to promote even cooking, we're going to roll it 180 degrees. Remove our probe. Just going to roll this around. Put it right back in this location. Reinsert our probe. So now we're going to continue to bring up the internal temperature to, like I said earlier, around 115, no more than 118. From there, we'll sear it, and we're shooting for our 130 degrees final temperature for a perfect medium rare. All right, I'm now at 118 on this probe, so I think we're close enough. We're just going to remove our probes. We can go ahead and remove that one. We'll take the meat and we're just going to set it right over here. Just going to drape some fall over this. I'm going to get it out of the way and we're going to get this fire stoked. All right, I'm going to open this bottom vent all the way open. Going to leave the lid open so it's getting plenty of air and this shouldn't take long. I'll bring you back just as soon as we get this where we needed it. I want to show you a new product from SNS Grills. This is their new scraper. It's also got a bottle opener on it. And I don't mind if I do. Oh man, that's good. All right, we are fired up. This took 10 minutes tops to get what you're seeing right here.
internal temp got up to about 129 and you're going to have a little bit of carryover that you got to consider carryover just sitting like this could go up as much as five degrees so we don't want to overshoot it i'm going to transfer it back to that wire rack we're just going to let it hang out for maybe five minutes let it rest then we're going to cut into it and see how we did what a beautiful color on this let me check dead center look at that I don't know if you can see that 131 130 so that's what we're wanting we're going to remove this rack we're going to lay this right here so i'm just going to cut this up not as thick as what a filet manual steak would be probably about half inch slices i'll probably start at this end since i'm kind of right-handed there oh man that's looking good it's cutting wonderful i'm already seeing the pink This meat will oxidize here in a few minutes. It's got a nice crust too. It's got a nice firm crust, but just ultra tender. And look at all the juices in that. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna give it a taste here and uh, see how it is. I already know how it's gonna be. That's just gorgeous. You can really see that that solid pink coming through and it's just super juicy this is a really nice cut of meat man it's just the smell out here is incredible i'm gonna go for one right here in the middle because i know that's picture perfect on the temperature they actually all look the same just a gorgeous color oh man and here we go Mm. such a great beefy flavor super tender super juicy the bark on this the crust was just just perfect the sns kamado i think you could see just how easy it is to dial in to really achieve those perfect temperatures to arrive at perfect results every time and uh, so you know, starting with a real good quality beef, and I did, I started with a prime beef tenderloin. That's also going to always give you better results in the end. Now, I hope I have explained this video well enough to where if you have never done this, that you can take what I've done in this video and have perfect results every time. I'm Russ Jones with SNS Grills, and remember, two zones are better than one.